This is Walk to Wealth, Episode 6. My name is John Mendez, and I am your host. Welcome to Walk to Wealth, where I motivate and inspire people new to the world of personal finance by letting you all in behind the scenes of someone who's still on his way. Welcome, guys, to episode six of the podcast. For all my new listeners, thank you for checking in. And for all my listeners who've been here before, thank you for the loyalty and thank you for the support. In today's episode, it's really, I'm making this episode because I've been getting a lot of DMs so far about, you know, hey, John, how to become an agent. Hey, John, I'm interested in real estate. And a lot of people have been asking me, so I decided to make a podcast episode about it. And I'm pretty much going to be going over how to become a real estate agent in Connecticut. So without further ado, let's take it away. So step one to getting your real estate license is you have to sign up for your real estate class. Simple as that. And in the state of Connecticut, you must sign up for the 60 hour course. And I personally recommend real estate university. That's who I took my class with. They were great. I love the instructors. The instructors were either brokers themselves or agents or they were some type of real estate professional. So they had experience in the industry. So they were, were very well versed in their knowledge, um, both from experience and from teaching the class for multiple years. You have to get your salesperson license before you get your broker's license. That's another question that I get asked a lot. Oh, John, I want to become a broker. I want to start my own thing. No can do. You got to get your salesperson license first. And in order to get your broker's license, you must wait two years. And so the real estate university class costs four fifty five, and then it's an additional $60 for both the, um, the CT books and the general books. Um, you don't have to pay 60 each. It's 60 together for both books. You can either have them deliver it to you, which I think costs a little bit extra, or you can go to their office in Norwalk and then pick up the books from there. Or if you have a friend or family, ask one of them to, to get you the books. I sold my books for pretty cheap to one of my aunts who wanted to take the class. And the classes that I took were weekday classes, and they're going to be on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. There's 15 modules all together. Each module goes over different chapters in the book. The classes are offered from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. or from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And you don't have to attend both classes. You can attend either or. But if you miss a day, you're going to have to wait until that module pops back up because they don't repeat classes more than one day. They go through everything, all the modules day after day. So you have to wait until the cycle starts completely over to get back to your class. So I suggest not missing classes. Um, as I said, there's 15 sessions in totals for the weekday classes. And just a quick disclaimer, you must be on camera for attendance to count. You know, you don't have to always participate, but you must be in camera because if not, you won't get credit and then you're not going to know that you didn't get credit. So when you try to apply for to take the class test, they're going to tell you that you're still missing a module. So make sure that you're on camera and that you're present. Once you finish your modules, you're going to have to take your class test in order to get completion credit. The class test is going to be on a live Zoom. It's going to be structured very similarly to the PSI exam. So there's going to be a general portion and a Connecticut portion. And all the questions on the, on the exam are all multiple choice. And if you're one of those people that get nervous when you hear the word test, no worries, because they have Kahoot classes typically at the end of the morning sessions. Also, they uh, all the teachers in the class are all real estate professionals in one way or another. So they pretty much all know what you need to focus on in order to pass the test. Once you pass the test, you have to fill out the salesperson handbook slash application. You have to then get that notarized and have that sent out to the PSI HQ you have to send that along with your school certificate and registration form. Once approved, you can then take the PSI exam. It costs $65 to take the exam. It's 90 questions for the general portion, 35 questions for the CT portion, 
and you need a 70 on both to pass. So if you pass with a 70 on one of the exams, but then you get a 69 on the other exam, you're going to have to take only this exam that you failed over again. So you don't have to take the exam more than once if you already passed that one portion, right? And then you could take the PSI at any location. I recommend the PSI in Queens. But if you can find a location that is more convenient for you, definitely go there. Once you start getting ready to take your PSI exam, I suggest you start your search for brokerages that you can potentially see yourself working at. And I suggest that because once you do pass your PSI exam and then you get your license, you want to be able to kind of get a feeling as to where you're going to go so you can get up and running a lot faster. And just so you know, residential real estate is very different from finding a traditional job, at least from my personal experience. And when you're looking for a brokerage to hang your license, you have the power in your hands. You get to pick which brokerage you want generally, and you can interview as many as you'd like. I say personally stick no more than four. Interview a boutique firm and a large firm. But if you try to interview every brokerage in town, you're just going to get yourself carried away and then you're never going to get your license hung up anywhere and then you're never going to get into real estate and you're just going to keep procrastinating. So make the interview process a lot simpler for yourself and try to stick to three or four brokerages that catch your eye. Three tips to picking the best brokerage. First, you have to ask yourself, is this a place that you can see yourself thriving in? Is this a place that you can see yourself thriving in? Really sit down and think about it. You know, take a look around, walk around, see what they have to offer inside whatever brokerage or whatever office. Um, or if you're planning on joining EXP, see what they have to offer in the cloud. Ask yourself, are they providing the necessary support and training that you need to kickstart your career? You know, a lot of brokerages say they offer X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and it's all cool. And it's like flashy, flashy object syndrome, I think it's called. And none of that stuff is actually going to pertain to you when you're a new agent. So you have to ask yourself, is this brokerage going to provide the necessary support that I need to take off my career? And then the last tip I say, do not worry about the splits. This is a big conception that splits are the most important part doesn't matter what the split is if you're not closing any transactions. So if you plan on getting your license and you already got five, six, seven, ten people in your pipeline ready to go as soon as you get your license that you can call up instantly, commissions should not be the most important thing. Because what's the difference between a 70-30 split and an 80-20 split or a 60-40 split if you're not making any deals and the brokerage that you're at isn't giving you any help? So... Your your splits aren't something that should be taken into too, too, too much consideration. And here's a quick bonus tip. Remember that most brokerages on paper are going to look exactly the same. So when worst comes to worst, just go with your gut feeling and stick it out for six months to a year and see where that takes you. But there's no harm in go with your gut feeling. Your gut is typically right more, more often than not. So just go with your gut feeling. And once you pass the PSI exam, here's where you start paying up again. So it's two eighty five to get your license plus another twenty dollars for the real estate guarantee fund. You have to choose a local board. I chose the Stanford Board of Realtors, and it's um six seventy four per year, which includes your membership to the CT Board of Realtors and the National Association of Realtors. And you have to get access to the MLS. You don't have to do it right away, but if you're planning on becoming an agent, you're going to need access to the MLS. And so you also need access to the Super E-Key, and prices can vary depending on when you joined. And typically, whatever brokerage you join also has a fee. So just to get started, you're going to be paying around $1,500, to give or take. And if you can do it as fast as possible, you can probably get it done in three months. So... That's about $500 a month for three months. Not to mention, Keller Williams is already implementing a real estate school so that you can get your license for free in many parts of the country. Another one of the reasons why you should join Keller Williams once you do get licensed. So here's the million dollar question. And I know most of you guys are probably thinking about this. John, 
if I get my real estate license, should I go solo or should I join a team? So I'm going to go over the pros and cons a little bit of both sides. And from there, hopefully you can make an educated decision as to which route you should end up taking. So here are some of the pros of going solo. You can build something of your own. And I know that's going to really resonate very well with a lot of you entrepreneurs. You can build something of your own. You can also brand yourself however you'd like. You don't have to go around wearing somebody else's name or somebody else's brand. You can go around wearing your own merch, your own stuff. And you can also create your schedule as you'd like. You can start becoming the controller of your day. You start planning out what times you want to do which actions. And you start getting more in control of how you try to conquer the day. One of the cons, though, is unless you get a coach or someone to mentor you, you're pretty much going to have to figure it all out on your own. So that may be a lot to bear, but if you're up for the challenge, definitely going solo might be the way to go for you. Now, here are some of the pros of joining a team. You can get into production faster, typically. So if you're someone that has obligations that they have to take care of, you have kids, you have a pet, you have student loans, you have a car payment, and you need money now, if you join the team, you more often than not may be able to become successful faster. Whatever you define success is up to you, but you typically get into production faster. You also have someone to report to typically and to keep you on track. If you're joining someone's team, they're they're hiring you because they think you're a good fit to help their business expand and for them to accomplish more. So they have a vetted interest in your success because if you're not succeeding, the team is going to be falling behind. And also, they have a proven system in place. More often than not, they have systems and models that they've been doing themselves. And now they're teaching you so that they continue growing. And if they didn't have the systems in place or the model in place, more often than not, their business wouldn't be able to sustain hiring new people. It wouldn't be profitable. One of the cons, though, to joining a team is that you're typically going to have to give up more commission and you can't do things the way you like all the time. So here are some of my last remarks about going solo versus going on a team. If you plan on going solo, you need to understand that you will never be highly successful in any area of your life if you try to do it on your own. And that's not to say that you can't do it. That's just to say that if you actually want to become successful, you need to hire a coach, you need to hire a mentor, you need to hire a team around you that's going to make you the most efficient, most productive person that you can be. And so you need to also network and mastermind with other agents to see what it is that does and doesn't work more than ever. You need to hire talent around you, like a transaction coordinator, an assistant, etc., If you plan on joining a team, it does not mean that they're going to take most of your money. Remember that 50% of a deal is better than 100% of no deal. I know several agents who are making well over or at least close to half a million a year in commission income and they're on a team. I know an agent who made a little over 100000 his first year on a team. So if it's you're worrying about the money, money is not an issue. Their money is going to come. And so you're not locked into a team for the rest of your life as well. And the experience that you learn and gain, if you so decide to leave the team maybe a year or two years out or several years out, yeah, you might not be able to take the clients that you made with you, but you'll be able to have that experience and they can't take away your experience. So you'll be able to get up and running a lot faster. So this is my favorite part of the, of the episode. And I'm going to tell you why you should make Keller Williams your home when you finally pass your test and you're ready to pick up brokerage. Reason number one, Gary Keller, who is the founder of Keller Williams, was named the most powerful person in real estate via Inman News. And if you know a little thing about Inman News, they don't really got too good of a relationship with Keller Williams. They don't, they tend to give us a hard time. So, um, And since 90% of the world's wealth is tied up in real estate, that makes Gary Keller the most powerful person in the world. Also, the culture is unmatched. This is really a business family. It's not just a business group of people. We have a culture of sharing and caring, and these are big parts of the like our work environment. 
We also have training that is unmatched. We've won the award for top training organization in the U.S., not only in real estate, but across all industries. We won it so many times, actually, that we're not allowed to compete for the award anymore. The coaching here is unmatched. Just in the Stanford Market Center alone, we have the number one productivity coaching in the country, which helps everyone from beginner agents to more experienced veterans. We have a profit share model. All KW offices have a profit share model. Whenever you sponsor someone, which means they join because of you, and they close a transaction, you can earn passive income, and they get to keep their full commissions. And just from the Stanford Market Center alone, we profit shared over $1.5 million alone. And we were only one out of 11 uh, KW offices, which has over 800 that profit shared over a million in 2021. KW as a company in, in total profit shared close to 200 million. We have two real estate investment groups within the Stanford Market Center. The first already has three properties and the second is on its way to owning five or six properties. We have a focus on wealth building. We believe it's more than closing sales. It's about building income to get more assets, to get more wealth. We have concierge services. We have a luxury division. We have a commercial division. We have a government services division. We have a sports and entertainment division. We are the largest sales force. We're number one in the world in terms of size, and we're number one in the U.S. in terms of production. We have charitable arms with KW Cares, KW Kids, Quantum Leap for Young Adults. We have masterminds locally, regionally, nationally. We have educational events regionally and nationally. And we also have local leadership. We don't have to wait for something to go to the higher ups and wait for decision making. We have the Keller Williams Expansion Network for when you get too big for your local market and you think that you want to start taking over other markets. We have the Keller Williams Referral Network and School of Real Estate. We have over $1.5 billion sold locally in 2021 for the KW203 Market Centers. We have a brick and mortar office. We give you a home to meet your clients and to do your work in. The list can continue forever, but I don't want to keep on going and talk your ears off about Keller Williams and why it's the best brokerage in the world. To be completely honest with all of you guys, a lot of brokerages has a lot to offer. There's an abundance of opportunity here, just as is a lot of other brokerages. And it really comes down to you know, your gut feeling. Cause yes, we have a lot to offer, but if you don't make use of any of it, what's the point? You know, if you can't see yourself really using any of this stuff, then Keller Williams might not be the best place for you, but it's definitely worth a, a try. It's definitely worth an interview because as I said, there's a lot to offer here. Once you pick a place to hang up your license, you're going to have to join your local board of realtors. And I decided to join the Stanford Board of Realtors, and it cost me about $674. That covered my CT Board of Realtors membership, and it also covered my National Association of Realtors membership. And both the National Association of Realtors and the CT Association of Realtors, they both have a lot of discounts and specials for things like insurance and select stores, etc. Then you need to get your super e-key and access to the MLS. The MLS is going to cost you anywhere from like 78 bucks to 200 bucks, depending on when you buy it. And the E-key is going to run you about $42 to $180, depending on when you buy it. So pretty much what the MLS stands for is multiple listing service. It gives you access to view all the properties on the market. And the E-key is then used to unlock the lock boxes to get the keys within to actually start getting into the houses when you go see them. Once you complete all of this, you'll be able to start doing business as a real estate agent. And now learning the skills necessary to actually start closing deals is a topic for another episode. And I know it may seem like a whole lot, but becoming an agent is so simple and the barrier to entry is so low. It costs way less than going to your traditional university and no loans are necessary. And also, the time it takes to become an agent is significantly shorter than most trade schools, community colleges, or other programs. It only could take you about three months if you don't miss a class and you really get after it. And if for whatever reason you decide it's not for you, you still need to have a place to live. So the experience you gain while you become an agent and hopefully do some agent business, you'll be able to 
transfer that to any area of your life, even after you decide that real estate might not be for you. So I say it's definitely worth a try. So pretty much the steps necessary to get your real estate license are you have to sign up for your class. You didn't have to pass that test. Then you have to pass the PSI exam. Then you have to find a brokerage to hang your license. Then you need access to the MLS and you need access to your e-key and you need to join a board of realtors. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. Again, I am your host, John Mendez. You can find me at John Mendez underscore realtor and at walk to wealth on Instagram. Please make sure to subscribe and leave a review if you're loving the podcast so far. New episodes are released every Sunday. Look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Take care.